waiting before I could queue. Yes, am I queued? I am queued. Look at that. Imagine that. And that means we're going to start the show. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Yes, it can sometimes be quite a treat to get all of the cameras cued, particularly when you're stuck doing it by yourself. But that is what it is, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it well. I'm going to do it well. All right, um, friends, it is the massive Fukushima update. I want to remind you. Uh, many of you know that I write for Blasting News and Wits News and um, a couple of other outlets. I want to mention, I do have a new interview with Jared Lausch, Lush from ChemLab. He's in a project now called Dog Tablet, and I have reviewed that on Blasting News. I'm also writing now for a comedy site called the Epstein's News, epsteinsnews.com. And you can go there. It's a fact-based satirical website so we write about things that have really happened and then we put a comedic and often satirical spin on it lastly if you'd like to be nice to somebody on their birthday you can pick me yes it's true today is in fact uh well it's not my birthday but saturday is my birthday it's the 23rd right now 705 it's really close i was gonna play birthday music but i forgot to cue it up maybe i'll do it later Maybe I'll get a sing-along or something. But if you'd like to go ahead and donate, you can do that at the correct views at hotmail.com. And every penny that you give to me that I put towards the show, I try to make a better show. Currently, I'm trying to get a, uh, a printer because mine has died, and it has made doing the dunce cap of the month a considerable pain in the keister. So um, that's the current, the current hope. All right, friends, we are going to go into the massive Fukushima update. I've babbled for a second. I've self-promoted. I've given everybody a chance to join in, and now I hope you're here. This is from CommonDreams.org, and it stood out to me because we've heard over and over again that they're going to clean up Fukushima in five years. They're going to clean up Fukushima, I mean, in 35 years. They're going to clean it up in 40 years. They very rarely mention that if you don't have the technology now, then you, when we don't, to even get near the radioactive fuel and other sites at the Fukushima Daiichi area, if you can't get near anything, you're basically guessing about how long it's going to take to create what you need. You're hoping that technology will in some, you know, find some magical way to do it. Um, we talked on the last Fukushima update about lasers being used and how that can sometimes degrade nuclear um, fissioning. You know, we don't know. We're out here in, in Hopeville because we built these ridiculous things against the advice of people that told us not to, and now we're suffering from it. Fukushima reactor cleanup delayed by five years as Japanese public demands end to nuclear energy. They should be demanding an end to nuclear energy. Backed it up five more years. What are we looking at? 45, 40, 50 years now? Is that the question? The Japanese government, it says, said Friday that it would delay for a fourth time the removal of spent fuel from two of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant causing concern that the cleanup of one of the worst nuclear disasters, it would be the worst, in history, is happening at a dangerously slow pace. And again, they, they want to just drain all of this into the ocean, as they have done before, but as Dr. Kellen Caldicott has proven, dilution is not the, answer, is not the solution to pollution. The removal of the spent fuel was planned to begin in 2023. But the process was bumped back to 2024 at the earliest for the plant's number one reactor and 2027 or later for the number two reactor. Now, where did you hear that that was going to happen at? Here! That's why you hit subscribe and hit share. According to the Japan Times, the government claims that this aspect of the cleanup is being delayed due to safety concerns and that it plans to construct barriers around the reactor to prevent the spread of radioactive dust. 
I'm sure they can be counted on for that to be a success. It won't at all blow into the ocean as it sits on the uh, coastline. No, not a chance. The wind wouldn't do that. Reporting on the delay comes after the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry proposed releasing the contaminated water from the plant into the ocean or allowing it to evaporate. And weeks after, the ministry said the water contained high levels of radioactive material higher than previously thought. And there is a link there for those of you that say that I don't get sources to the New York Times. It's uh, Japan Fukushima, a nuclear water disaster. The most recent news about the cleanup processes, which is under a 30 to 40 year plan following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, um, raised alarm among critics of nuclear power. Anthony Kuhn wrote, after proposing dumping radioactive water from Fukushima reactors into the sea, Japan's government now adds the idea of allowing the treated but still contaminated water to evaporate into the air, breathe deep. Again, source Japan Times. Um, this is from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on Twitter. The water from the Fukushima disaster is more radioactive than the authorities had previously publicized raising doubts about government assurances that it's safe. And you can read that from nonukesnewyorktimes.com. The Japanese public has reportedly grown increasingly anti-nuclear power since the Fukushima disaster, according to Al Jazeera. Japanese people's sentiment towards the Fukushima Daiichi and its continuing... The take two. Japanese people's sentiment changed after Fukushima Daiichi, and it's continuing until now, said Hajami Matsukuro, Secretary General of the Citizens Nuclear Information Center. They say no, he told Al Jazeera. In 2015, a poll by the Japan Atomic Energy Relations Organization, only 10% of Japanese respondents said they that the country should maintain its use of nuclear energy. If anything good has come out of this, it is the, uh, the anger and justifiable rage and concern that is being shown from people here in Japan because nuclear is pure poison. And, you know, you, you have people out there trying to say otherwise, but they don't have facts. They have bunk science. That's why you have to look to, real, to where the real science is. Otherwise, it's of no good to go ahead reading about how safe it is when these studies, the only studies that claim this are tied into the nuclear industry and they have a lot of, a lot of cash on the line here, so it pays for them to lie. Uh, this is New York Times. Uh, Fukushima says radiation poses no threat to the Olympic torch rally. Uh, this is from Reuters. It's also in New York Times, like I said, January 21st, 2020, so don't say this, not current. Fukushima Prefecture, home of the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant on Tuesday, reassured participants and spectators at the Olympic torch rally this year that they would not need to worry about radiation exposure. No, because they want the billions of dollars that's going to come in from the, uh, from the whole ceremony and all of the Olympics. That is more important to them. The bottom line is more important. So they... they misconstrue an outright lie. They hide facts about how dangerous this is, just like they've hidden facts about areas that need to be and should have long ago been considered uninhabitable, evacuated. The four-month torch journey ahead of the 2020 Olympics will begin on March 26th at J Village, a soccer training center in Fukushima that served as a frontline operations base for workers who battled the 2011 nuclear crisis. Oh, it sounds great. Again, they never say, how, how is it safe? Considering that the half-life of uranium is 740 million years, of over 500, uh, depending on, there's two kinds of radioactive uranium. One is 740 million years, one is 500 million years. Since uh, 500 million years has not passed since 2011, and since we know that these radionuclides are in that area, just how this is somehow safe has unfortunately never been addressed. Again, money, money, money. 
Of more than 24,000 monitoring spots along the relay route in Fukushima, one in Itetete village, I think that's Ishiet, northeast of Tokyo, had the highest reading at 0.77 microsieverts per hour, the prefecture's December survey results showed. The trouble with this is, in many instances, they are testing for elements other than uranium or plutonium. For instance, and I've covered this in the past, they don't test for all of the radioactive elements which can be present in the area. Therefore, they're testing for elements which they know to some degree, at least in many instances, are going to be almost non-existent while the more damaging ones are deliberately ignored, the same way that the hot particles have been largely ignored, even though there are stacks of science to, prom to uh, talk about most of that. Wow, hello, we got uh, Mike, Tracy, Roger, Jason, Lee, Daniel, Blizzard, hey, I still need my cord, and Jenna, welcome aboard, uh, Daniel from Green Jello there, fellow, uh, fellow musician in that project with me. Global news. Pickering Nuclear Generating Station emergency alert issued in error, OPG says. Uh, Ontario Power Generation says an emergency alert issued with respect to an incident at the Pickering Nuclear Generating Power Station was done so in error. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Obviously, we're going to gloss over that one. But the bigger point here is that these are ticking time bombs, and the industry, as well as people who run these, are more than aware of the risks posed. So you've got people living beside these bombs, but basically what they are. We don't know when they're going to go off, but we know inevitably, in one way or another, they will. And, I mean, you see these at Cedar Point, for crying out loud, where people are bringing their families a nuclear power station right beside the amusement park. Uh, one of my favorite places in the world back when life was the happiest ever. And I must say, you know, it just sits there in the horizon line like a, a great blight just waiting to uh, jeopardize the entire area. And we have these things that built all over the United States and elsewhere. And uh, regular listeners will know that I had said in the past that almost without fail, we have proven in this country that an earthquake can create uh, Fukushima-like conditions even if there's no water nearby. No, no, I should say no ocean nearby. And the way that that can happen is two ways. First of all, we know that the earthquake itself in Fukushima began the meltdown of one of the reactors. We know that. It's science. It's proven. It's, it's established fact. And when you multiply that by the number of earthquakes that we have seen in America and elsewhere recently, that's quite a concern. Second of all, a lot of the nuclear power stations are based near dams. So if an earthquake was to hit a dam near a nuclear power station, you could be looking at a washing, much like what was seen in Fukushima after the earthquake. These are two things which are commonly not addressed. And this is from Fox 2 Now, speaking on this very topic. December 27th, magnitude 5-1 earthquake strikes Iran near a nuclear power plant. Now, do you remember ever since I started this freaking show that I have said the very people who warned about Fukushima, who were right about Fukushima, and who were not listened to about Fukushima are the very same people warning that you cannot build a nuclear power station in Bashar where Iran is trying to build it. Yes, they are Islamic terrorists. Yes, they fund terrorism. But even if they didn't, even if they weren't hoping to use it for a dirty bomb or to produce nuclear weapons, which has been proven that they are, we'll get more on that later, it's still, they could be the best, they could be great glowing Christians giving out food to the hungry, and it wouldn't change the fact that you cannot build a nuclear power plant in this area of Iran, end of story, not up for debate. 
No more need sad. It's that simple. It's that cut and dry. It's not pithy. It's that cut and freaking dry. A magnitude 5 earthquake struck southern Iran early Friday morning in the region which houses the country's first nuclear power plant. The quake occurred just after 5 a.m. local time, 27 miles southeast of the city of Borajan in Bashar province at a depth of 38.3 kilometers. That's 23.7 meters. It says here they have a history of deadly quakes. Iran is no stranger to tectonic activity. The country sits on a major fault line, so let's build a nuclear power plant there. The country sits on a major fault line between the Arabian and Eurasian plates and has experienced many earthquakes. Um, there's a link here to CNN. Well, not that they're the most trustworthy place ever. Um, Iran Earthquake Index. In November, at least five people were killed, according to CNN again. And uh, 330 others were injured after a 5.9 magnitude earthquake struck northwestern in Iran. Last year, a quake that struck near the Iran-Iraq border in November killed at least 361 people. More than 400 people um, died and thousands were killed when a powerful 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck near the Iran border in November of 2017. The deadliest quake this century occurred in 2003 when a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake struck the southeastern city of Bam, killing 26,000 people. You want to build it? You, you, let's help Iran get nuclear for the green, the global warming Easter Bunny, which isn't even happening. But even if it was happening, the solution would not be to build a pseudo-nuclear bomb on top of a power plant. Call it a hunch. And this is economic collapse. Michael Snyder, seven major changes that uh, show that the Earth... Oh, I gotta, hold on. That show, excuse me, seven major Earth changes that are happening right now that everyone needs to know about. Now, you can read this for yourself. It's at the economiccollapseblog.com. Um, he's aggregated my work before, so shout out to him. Um, Michael Snyder, I was on the most important news a couple of times with articles, but I want to read this. How many of you remember that right after Fukushima started, back when Christelle and I were doing, starting the show, we would report quite frequently that the temperature was suspected to rise after the Fukushima disaster to some degree, and that it could, it would not necessarily have to be based on that disaster, but it would be a, uh, it would be something of significance if it did. And I'm not saying that there's a direct tie here, but this does tie into the hypothesis, which, the hypothesis which were given at the time of the disaster. And it's three on his list here. Number three, meanwhile, the oceans of the world just keep getting hotter and hotter. In fact, ocean temperatures off the California coast have been setting an all-time record highs. Uh, this is from, um, my, again, Michael Snyder. It is odd that this is taking place at a time of such low solar activity. But according to NBC News, this is definitely happening. Quote, the world's oceans hit their warmest level in recorded history in 2019 according to the study published Monday that provides more evidence that Earth is warming at an accelerated pace. Now, before you say, well, Sam, you just said that global warming was a hoax. It is a hoax. The, the warming of the planet, which is now not happening any longer and going into a cooling spell due to sun activity, as a matter of fact, it does not rise in line, in ratio, with the temperature of the ocean. So the two are not connected. That's easily proven. The analysis, which also found that ocean temperatures in the last decade have been the warmest on record, shows the impact of human-caused warming on the planet's oceans suggests that the sea rise level, ocean asphyxiation, and extreme weather events could worsen this as they continue to absorb heat. So what is causing all that heat to lock in? There are some people who have said that extreme contamination from radioactive elements could cause this. Other people have said that it wouldn't dealing with how large the ocean is itself. So that one I'm not going to say is absolute fact, 
but I, I did want to put it in with the other show full of absolute facts that I have given you and am still giving you for two more stories so that you would at least want to look in and study. Fair enough? Fair enough. Zero Hedge. Two stories left. At least 61 U.S. veterans who guarded the contaminated ex-Russian base died or have cancer. Another instance where supposedly something is cleaned up, supposedly something is safe, and we send our men and women into the area with all of these assurances from all of these supposed nuclear experts. And what we find is anything but safety. As a matter of fact, we find death find cancer. At least 61 U.S. Special Operations Forces, it says, who were deployed to a former Soviet base just a few hundred miles from the Afghanistan border have either died or have cancer, according to a new report from the Clashley's D.C. Terracop. Another source. The deployment, which began shortly after 9-11 tax, Attack, shortly after the 9-11 attacks, excuse me, were to a military site in Uzbekistan called Karshi Kanabad, known as K-2. Smoking the K-2! It was leased by the United Nations from the Uzbek government weeks after the 2001 terror incident, as it was in close proximity to Al-Qaeda and Taliban targets. Again, War, 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 the military-industrial complex, caring more about warfare than the safety of the people who we send to fight the wars. The U.S. troops were greeted by a radiation hazard, warning signs, and black goo oozing from the ground, and a pond that actually glowed green. It says that it glowed green, according to the military report. K2. Has contaminated was contaminated with chemical weapons, remnants, radioactive processed uranium, and other hazards, according to documents obtained by McClatchy. At least 61 of the men and women who served at K2 had been diagnosed with cancer or died from the disease, according to a 2015 Army study at the base. Now, considering that the disaster, the nuclear the disaster, the attack that sent our men and women happened in 2001, the fact that they have cancer and have died by 2015 immediately shows that not only were they juiced with a very high level, but that the incubation period for cancer is much smaller, much smaller than is often said among those in the nuclear industry and those who cover for them, such as our great debunker. By the way, make sure you leave a comment below uh, mocking this idiot about how many sources have actually been given in this show. Every time you hear a source, write it. Go back, do the other ones, it'll be great. But that number may not include the special operations forces deployed to K2, who were likely not counted due to the secrecy of their missions, the study reported. And again, that's McClatchy, D.C. Black goo and other ominous signs. According to the report, the Defense Department knew K2 was contaminated from the start based on documents obtained by McClatchley, which are now being made public, and they're on this article. After Uzbek soldiers who prepared the base fell ill in 01, U.S. Central Command ordered an intelligence review of hazards at the facility. Ground contamination at Karshi Karnabad Airfield poses health risks to U.S. forces deployed there, reads the classified report dated November 6th of 01, which added that the tent city that the U.S. military was building, which included tents for eating, and we all know how bad it can be when ingested or inhaled, sleeping and showering were, quote, in some cases directly on top of soil that probably was contaminated by four separate hazards. First, there was the missile storage facility that had exploded in June of 1993. Ground contamination from the explosion and the subsequent expulsion of missile propellant throughout the area is very likely, the report said. Again, this is all things that the government knew. Two other hazard li hazards listed are were an abandoned fuel storage facility and an abandoned aircraft maintenance 
Science Facility identified as the likely sources of the black goo, which the report said is most likely a combination of oils, hydraulic fluids, glues, paints, solvents, and lubricants. The fourth hazard noted that the report Noted in the report was that the northeast corner of the tent city was likely affected by runoff from chemical weapons decontamination sites, which had appeared on U.S. intelligence imagery in 1987. So the government was more than aware of these problems and where they were sending and what they were sending our boys and uh, women into. Part of this area has been already has already been fenced off by the U.S. forces as an expansion area, reads a November 15th, 01 document obtained by McClatchy. To call this site a landfill is an insult to landfills. McClatchy has spoken with several veterans who were stationed at K2, who are now speaking out because of the difficulties faced in having the Department of Veterans Affairs to cover their medical treatment. So just like a 9-11 with the first responders, the government now is doing everything they can, not just to not pay, because in the scheme of things, it probably wouldn't be that much, but to not have to admit that they knowingly jeopardized our soldiers. After returning from combat years later, excuse me, we are all coming down with various forms of cancer that the Department of Veterans Affairs is refusing to acknowledge according to retired Army Chief Warrant Officer Scott Welsh, a Special Operations Military Intelligence Officer who deployed to K2 in October of 01 and who now has a thyroid cancer which was diagnosed in 14. Eventually, warning signs were erected outside the berm. A new bright yellow sign went up with black and red letters that said, Danger, Keep Out, keep out Chemical Weapons. Another black and white sign, Danger Off Limits Radiation Hazard, was in front of a row of ponds nicknamed Skittles after the candy because the river glowed bright green but often had other colors too. The ponds were located just outside the berm. So yeah, it's safe. It's like a Fukushima. The wind won't blow or nothing. You're fine. Wind doesn't do that. Another black and white sign, Danger, or excuse me, several veterans who served at K2 are preparing a letter for Congress. Please come to our aid and assist us in dealing with these illnesses that have forever altered the courses of our lives and the lives of our families, wrote retired Lieutenant Colonel Omar Hamada, flight surgeon for the Army National Guard's 1st Battalion 20 Special Forces Group, which was sent to K2 and O2. And there's a copy of his letter here, both on Prison Planet and Zero Edge. Again, at least 16 U.S. veterans who guarded contaminated ex-Russian base died or have cancer is the name of the work. The VA, listen to this in closing, refuses to help. Where have we heard this before? Several veterans deployed to K2 report that the Defense Department and the VA have been turning them away or doubting their health issues altogether. Yeah, I just doubt some cancer. The most important message to com communicate were that there were no K2 exposures to he of health consequence, instructs an updated three-page information for healthcare staff guide published by the Pentagon's Deployment Health Clinical Center that was obtained by McClatchy. So what you're looking at here is, remember we said earlier that the only people that come out in favor of nuclear are those who are tied into the nuclear industry. Well, now you've got the only people saying that there isn't anything to be afraid of being the ones who are trying not to pay for what they should be paying for because there was a lot to be afraid of. Some may believe that they were exposed to dangerous chemicals and that they haven't been told the truth, reads the guide. Your reassurances may not lessen the overall concern. So they're basically telling them how to lie to people. The guide emphasized that medical staff should show K2 veterans respect for their service to the country, observing it often helps to report to thank them for their service. In other words, butter them up, but don't actually help them any. Give them platitudes instead of medical care. The VA responded to a query by McClatchy on the number of cancers among the service members based in K2 with a statement saying, 
The premise of your inquiry is false. There is no indication of increased cancer rates among veterans who served in Karachi, Canada, which is why cancer is not presumptive condition for veterans who served in that area. Again, another blatant lie. You do not find people this young getting this many forms of cancer in these numbers. 66 is a very high number in that age group among a very considerably small group of people who were there. That phrase, presumptive condition, it says, can mean the difference between a service member paying the bill for cancer treatments out of their own pocket or having the cost covered by the VA. Tax dollars hard at work, friends. A presumptive condition is any medical condition that the VA has accepted as likely connected to a veteran's military service. Again, the, the level of dishonesty tied to all of this is simply staggering. And uh, again, I would recommend reading the entire report at McClatchleyDC.com. I think you will be uh, pleased that you did. Friends, uh, that brings us, you know what it brings us to, the dumdy of the day. You are an idiot. You are an idiot. I want to remind you, friends, you can donate to The Correct Views at uh, the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, it'd be a great birthday gift. Again, my birthday is Saturday. It would also be a great way to uh, help the show get some uh, much-needed upgrades. Uh, Zero Hedge, dumdy of the day. Iran will no longer observe any limits on uranium enrichment. They weren't anyway. The whole reason that President Donald Trump wisely canceled the uh, nuclear agreement is because they were not adhering to the terms of the uranium enrichment agreement anyhow. Zero Hedge, in what is a final blow to Obama's landmark JCPOA, or the uh, 2015 Iran nuclear deal as it is known, Iran's government said on Sunday that it would no, no longer, nice typing, abide by any limits on its enrichment of uranium, but would continue to cooperate with the UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, according to the semi-official FARS agency. Now, not only has the IAEA been called into question on a few instances as it pertains to Fukushima, but the terms of Obama's ridiculously doltish um, plan here gave them so much time to move uh, centrifuges and other things that it would be all but impossible to catch them doing it, which again is why Trump was smart to take us out of it. The Islamic Republic will no longer observe any limits on the operational aspects of its nuclear program, they write, without ever saying that they weren't to begin with, to include uranium enrichment capacity, enrichment percentage, levels of enriched material, and research and development. In other words, to make a nuclear bomb, far as reported, citing a statement from the government. As a reminder, President Trump started the process of unwinding, windy, windy, Obama's signature foreign policy deal in May of 2018 when he withdrew wisely the U.S. from the deal, setting off a chain of events that have seen tensions rise to the point where the two countries were now on the brink of war. Far as a government statement saying Iran would not respect any limits set down by the pact on the number of uranium enrichment centrifuges it could use, which meant that there would be no limits on its enrichment capacity to the level of which uranium could be enriched or Iran's nuclear research and development. Those would now be based on Iran's technical needs. Yeah, because we all need a nuclear bomb. The statement said that Iran's steps could be reversed if Washington lifted the sanctions on Tehran, Tehran so they could build a nuclear bomb, which, of course, won't happen anytime soon, if ever, since we don't want them to have a nuclear bomb. Instead, what will happen is the U.S. will use Iran's unilateral exit for the nuclear deal and its threat of a nuclear Iran as justification for military intervention. That's what they opined here at Zero Hedge, one which 
in addition to U.S. military, may also involve Israeli forces. Israel, regardless of what the U.S. says, does, implores, wishes for, or doesn't, is not going to help what is a carved-in-stone fact, and that is that Israel, regardless of what the U.N. wants, will never allow the state sponsors of terrorism known as Iran to have a nuclear bomb. Why? Because, among other things, many people have historically chanted death to Israel as they march in the streets, for one. That'd be a good reason, I would say. Um, friends, thank you very much for listening to the show. Thank you for supporting it. Do me a favor, friends. Uh, make sure you do donate at the correct views of hotmail.com through PayPal. And please make sure that you share the show. Um, hello, Sarah, Ryan, Cindy, and Travis. Glad you guys all listened. Thank you so much, guys. Good night. God bless. And does it get shut off? And it get shut off.